Hi, this is Jennifer Bagley with CI Web Group and the 12 Step Roadmap Program. And first off, I wanted to thank you guys for uh, purchasing our Google Apps training program. By now, you've probably watched a handful of videos and hopefully are not too overwhelmed. We definitely saved the Google Analytics for last as uh, it's probably the most complex out of all of the different uh, Google Apps programs that there are, but also probably one of the most important. Now, um, the way that we're going to do this training is essentially we're going to use a real live website that we launched, our company launched, uh, on November 2nd. So this is um, November 2nd, 2013. Today it is November 26, 2013. This is a website that we uh, built and put online. It has had absolutely zero marketing done. So this is strictly uh, a website that is has no SEO. Um, very little content, and we're just ref hand referring people to the site, either through social media, through links in our emails, sending people there from events and so forth. So that's where the majority of the traffic is going to come from. But the majority of reason why I wanted to use this site is because it's brand new, so it'll give you a real clean slate as far as what analytics should, should look like as soon as you install it. First things first. If you guys are doing business with any SEO company and they're sending you analytics, quote unquote, reports, and at the top of those reports, you see their uh, logos and it's uh, their traffic reports, not page rank reports, but traffic reports, that's going to be something that you really want to uh, quadruple check. More importantly, anybody that's a website owner, it's critical that you have Google Analytics installed on your site. There's no reason you shouldn't have that done. It's absolutely free to set up, easy to configure. Um, you guys can set up your own accounts, you can give access to your web managers, and you can have them install it or you can install it yourself. But it's almost neglect not to have uh, Google Analytics installed on your website. I'm sure you've all heard the saying, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. And that's really what this is about, measuring your progress. So first things first, if you're managing multiple sites, you'll notice um, there's a link here that's going to allow you to go in between sites. So if you have more than one, you can navigate uh, or switch in between each one of those through that link. Secondly, you have reporting and customization as your tabs. On the top right hand side, you have the ability to select time frame. So the time frame for this one is simple. It's only through um, November. We're only looking at a 30 day time frame because there's no history prior to that. But if you wanted to look at history, you could go back in time and you could put a custom date range in there. So you can say, I just want to look at today, yesterday, last week, last month, or a custom date range. You also have the ability to compare. So if you want to look over a previous period or a previous year, you can do that as well. And it's going to give you the highlights in orange for the previous period and or previous year. And that way you can track both. So I'm going to say, um, we're going to keep it just as is. We're not going to do any comparisons because there's no data to compare to. It's just one month. Top right hand side, you also have the ability to look by hour, which you probably won't do unless you're using, if you're doing like a social media campaign that has a time limit on it or uh, an email campaign that has a time limit on it or some promotion that uh, is really time sensitive. This gives you the ability to look by day. Day is important, especially if you're doing blog posting, uh, digital marketing efforts, if you have an email campaign and so forth, and you want to be able to see the number of visitors to the site per day. You can also look by week. So by week you have, this is the first day, and then you can go through and see each individual week using these icons. And finally by month, and you can see this is where we started, this is where we ended up. I'm going to scroll down. You'll notice on the left hand side, you have the ability to search. So you can go through and pick here. You also have the ability uh, to go through all of the different navigation tools. So I'll show you those shortly. This is your main dashboard overview. You can tell where you are at the very top where it says audience overview. You have the ability to email the reports, export the reports in a CSV, TSV, Excel file, Google spreadsheet, or a PDF. And so for those of you that have already watched your Google Docs or Google Drive training videos, which were part of this package, you'll now know how to utilize Google Drive. So uh, the benefit to that is you can pull up your analytics, upload it to a Google spreadsheet, and then share it with other people within your organization. And you can actually maintain that history and that data right in your Google Drive account. Again, all of this is totally free.
You also have the ability to add a dashboard or you can add shortcuts, for example. This is your dashboard, so you can mess around with this. You guys, you really can't break it, so don't worry about getting in here and making changes. You can always revert back as well. So we'll go through for this website in the last 30 days. Um, it hasn't even been live 30 days, so I think it's been two weeks. There has been 400 visits, 143 unique visitors. Um, very importantly, the difference between a visit, a hit, and a unique visitor is significant. So a unique visitor is a unique IP address, a real human being with a computer, and that IP address comes to the website and that is tracked and tallied as a unique visitor. A visit is somebody maybe from the same IP address coming back to the site, and that's where you can track returning visitors as well. What you don't ever want to measure a website's performance on is hits. Uh, in the olden days, quote unquote, a couple years ago, they used to put hit counters on websites. And you could start the hit counter at 10,000 and then let it go up. So if you had 10,000 and one hits, that means you had one visitor to the site. The other challenge with looking at hits is that that can be multiple page loads. It can be image loads. One page view can result in multiple hits. And so you really just want to avoid ever measuring a site based on hits, period. So most two important things are visitors and unique visitors. Next, page views. How many pages are they seeing in the site? If you guys want to know what something means, just highlight it over it. So this is page views. is the total number of pages viewed. Repeated views of a single page are also counted. Next, page visits. Page visits, the average depth or page depth is the average number of page viewed when somebody comes to the site. Repeated views of a single page are counted as well. So what you'll notice we have typically two and a half page views or a little less than that, two and a quarter page views when somebody comes to the site. Industry standards are three. So um, it actually, you know, I shouldn't even say that because it's going to depend on your industry. All right. Average site duration or site visit duration. This is the average time duration of somebody visiting the site. Typically, you are going to see two and a half to three minutes on almost every website. If you see something over three minutes, that means you've got a good site with lots of content on it and people are, are traveling around. Bounce rate. This is somebody coming to the site. So bounce rate is the percentage of a single page, i.e. they visit the website, they left your website from the same interest page without interacting with the page. So if somebody comes into your home page and they don't do anything after that and they close that page down, that's going to be a bounce rate. That's going to affect your bounce rate. So, for example, if you send somebody to your website, they grab your phone number and they place a call, they close the site down, that's going to count against bounce rate. There's lots of different um, views on whether bounce rate should be a, a really key indicator in how well your website performs. And some people say ignore bounce rate. It's absolute garbage. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'll let you decide after you go do your own research. So if you want to know how important bounce rate is to a website, I challenge you to go to Google and start Googling uh, about bounce rate. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it indifferent? And so forth. And you can come up with your own view. But that debate is a, a single debate you can have. So with that, another um, very uh, another very important statistic is going to be the percent of new versus returning visitors. You'll notice over here, 52% of the total traffic, 157 visits are returning visitors, somebody who's been to the site and came back, and 47% are new visitors, 143. So this is going to depend entirely on the type of website that you have. If you have Bank of America website and you have a million people or a million plus or a few million people from around the world coming and logging in to check their bank account on a regular basis, your returning visits are going to be very high. If you're trying to market and drive new traffic and unique visitors to the website, then hopefully your, your new visits are going to be very high. Also, if you launch a big social media campaign that's driven towards unviewed um, uh, users, then you're going to be wanting new traffic to the site as well. So this really depends on what your goals are, what your marketing plan is, who you're marketing, where you're marketing to, and so forth, and what type of a business slash website you have. We'll scroll down. You have demographics on the left-hand side, language on the right-hand side. We're going to go ahead and hit um, demographics. We're going to go look by country. 
This is um, depending again on the type of business. I have one, uh, one of our clients, which is an online university, and they want international traffic because they do English as a second language for people looking uh, for careers. So they may um, really want to see traffic coming from other locations. You really, if you're a United States-based business, especially a geo-targeted based business, such as a restaurant, you're going to want to see the majority of your traffic happening uh, from the United States and even want to drill down even further and figure out where that is coming from. You'll notice with us, we are a Texas and California-based business. So you'll notice the majority of our traffic comes from Texas and California. This is exactly what we want to see for our site um, for now until we start using this uh, more as a general marketing tool. You can drill into individual cities and you can drill into Plano, Mesquite, Dallas, Richardson, and so forth. So, and you can see where that traffic is coming from, what percent of new visits, new visits, bounce rates, page visits, duration, and so forth. All right, that being said, we're gonna go ahead and um, here's your, your geography map and you can drill into each area to see uh, specific information. And this is really based on site usage. All right, we'll go back to the Explorer. This will give you um, traffic by location as well. So back to the top, you're gonna notice we're looking at location. If you wanna know how this correlates to the menu, you're gonna go over to the bottom and you'll see we were looking at audience, geo, which is geography, and location. Language, you can do the same thing. Uh, language for us matches our geography, which is United States slash English. All right. We're going to uh, scroll through. We're going to go back up to audience and let's go ahead and close these. When you close these drop down menus, this is what you'll have in your main dashboard. You'll have real time audience acquisition, behavior, and conversion, and these are standard reports. And then you also have my stuff, which includes dashboard shortcuts and intelligence. This video is primarily for a basic and elementary or startup business. This is not for advanced analytics where you're running campaigns, doing uh, pay-per-click campaigns, AdWords, uh, conversion metrics, AB variance testing, and so forth. That's going to be a totally different training, probably not included inside uh, the Google app training because that's more of an advanced player. All right, so we're gonna scroll through real time. We're gonna go uh, overview. So right now it's gonna tell you how many active visitors are on the site. I'm going to pull up 12 step roadmap. This is the website that's uh, being tracked. As I mentioned before, no content. This just has a few videos, a couple handouts, a couple uh, web forms, an event calendar, and a few call to action forms. All right. And you'll notice active visitors on the site right now, one. And that's because we just opened the site. Uh, we're going to go through locations. You're going to see location is United States, Plano is the visitor, and that's where I'm at right now. So if you want to know how quick analytics uh, tracks content or tracks uh, traffic, that's a great way to do that. All right, traffic sources, content. So you can see I'm on the home page. I'm going to go into 12-step roadmap, and I'm going to go ahead and open up a few more pages. And I'm going to go back to content. And you're going to notice we have action plan. So it's telling me what pages that we're visiting right now. And now I'm on the contact us page. So you saw I literally went through. I clicked handout first. I clicked action plan second. I clicked calendar third, um, blog fourth, and contact us fifth. And it shows I'm on the contact us page. So it's very, very real time. You'll see I'm United States, city, and so forth. All right, um, we're not going to go over events. We're not going to go over conversions uh, right now. And I'm going to close um, real time reports and we're going to move into audience. First thing under audience, we're going to go over demographics. This is the general um, overview we were looking at previously. We're going to drill into demographics and look for overview. This is going to show the overview, age of the site. All of the basic information is here. This is just general. You can enable or unenable each one of these. This is going to require validation and tracking codes. So um, you guys, there's different levels that you can set up your Google Analytics. 
uh, and you'll notice there's different tracking codes that you'll need for each one depending on how much information you want. So same thing with here, your demographics. If you're looking to track age and gender, that's going to be something you're going to want to set up. All right, um, interest. Some of you will use this. Many of you won't. Affinity categories in market segments, other categories. We'll go into geo. This is what we just looked at, language and location. And location. All right, then we're going to go into behavior. We're going to drill into new versus returning. As I mentioned before, this is a key performance indicator for a basic site you're going to want to keep track of. Percent of new versus returning, and you get all of the acquisition behavior and conversion uh, reports as well. We're going to go frequency, so you can see um, exactly this is the number of, of visits. So out of 143 visits, there are 300 page views that occurred from there. And you can go, um, this is the number of times. So somebody that comes to the site once, twice, and so forth. So the number of people that have been to the site multiple times from 9 to 50. Also, you can drill into uh, site duration, how long they've been on the site as well, from 10 seconds to 60 seconds, 100, uh, 181, and so forth. We'll go into technology. I'm going to close out of behavior. You can see how they're coming to the site, so what browser they're looking for. You'll notice the majority of traffic coming to our site uses Google Chrome. Internet Explorer is far behind with Firefox coming in second, Safari uh, fourth. We'll move into network. You can drill down into what internet network or ISPs, internet service providers, are being used. Scroll out of technology, drop into mobile. For many of you, if you are not using a responsive website, that's going to be critical, something you need to consider doing right away. I'm going to open this up, go back to presentations. Mobile websites are going to significantly impact your mobile views and your bounce rate for mobile sites. So if you notice you have an extremely high bounce rate for mobile sites or for your mobile views, that's going to be something you need to fix. So you'll notice as this um, website changes, you'll notice the entire website is shape-shifted to be able to fit a device. The navigation turns into a drop-down, and you'll see everything is stacked on top of each other so it doesn't impact the viewer's uh, ability to see the site. It doesn't shrink it down. So here you'll see um, 20, let's see here, so 267 people come from a desktop, 27 from a mobile, and 6 from a tablet. Next you can go in, there's the ability to add custom variables and user-defined variables. You can also go through visitor flow. Visitor throw is going to tell you how they come in. This is a more complex way to looking at your site, but it's going to show you where did they start, what was their first interaction, second interaction, and you can continue to uh, scroll to be able to see additional interactions. I'm going to close audience up and we're going to move into acquisition. So overview for acquisition, this is going to show you how many of them came from direct. It's acquisition versus behavior and we don't have conversion set up because there's no goals been set up on this site yet. But we have direct, social, organic, and referral. Next, we'll go into all traffic, and this is going to show you where did the traffic come from. So here, you um, this typically, unfortunately, uh, when you have uh, brackets in here, many times if, if somebody is logged into their Google account, Google will not always give you specific details, but you'll notice direct traffic is our number one source on this site. Facebook is number two. Google organic, number three. I don't even know how since it's not a... Not optimized, uh, DNet TV, Facebook, our HVAC website, and so forth. So you can see each one of these, which ones drove the most traffic. Next, um, we're going to go into keywords, and we're going to go look at organic. So you can see what people are looking for. You'll notice almost all of ours, because there is no SEO, um, there's no primary key phrases. This is something you're going to want to pay attention to. Again, this is people who are logged into their Gmail accounts. Um, so you'll see what is the key phrase, how many visits came from that particular key phrase. If you were doing paid, which we're not, then you would have your paid key phrases there as well. 
And um, let's see here, cost analysis, you have the ability if you're investing in campaigns and you're investing in conversion campaigns and paid advertising, you can go through AdWords, social and search engine optimization. We're gonna close out of audience and we're gonna drill into behavior. So here you can go into your overview, which is going to show you there's 677 pages, 509 unique pages, average time on site is two minutes, 53% bounce rate, 44 exit rate. You can see what pages they're going to. So this site is more used for um, kind of an operational tool, not a marketing tool. So the majority of people are coming to the site, they're going to the homepage because they need to get the presentation that's on the homepage, which is here, this PowerPoint presentation. You're going to see the next page that people are going to is to fill out the mobile app. Uh, for those people that are building a mobile app, we created just a quick intake form for them to fill all of their information out to develop the mobile app. Next one is their social media intake form. And the social media intake form is so that um, those that are starting a social media program with them can fill this one out. So you'll notice this is more used for operations, not sales. All right, and, but this will give you an idea of every single page, where people are coming from. You can always view a full report from the top right hand corner. And just to remind you, you can always export email um, any of these reports. So if I wanted to drop this into a Google spreadsheet, I could easily do that here. All right. Um, site content, you can go all page, you can drill down, you can look at specific landing pages, you can also look at the speed of the site, how quickly things are loading. You can also do different experiments, analytics, and as I said earlier, AB variant tested and so forth, but you're probably going to have uh, a, an SEO company that's working with you for those, uh, for those kind of, of uh, reporting tools as well. So most important thing to notice on uh, analytics is you really want to pay attention to the traffic that you have come in, where the, con where the uh, traffic is coming from, where they're exiting to, what pages they're looking at, how long they're staying on pages, and what are the key phrases uh, that are bringing, what are the key phrases that are bringing those um, customers or prospects to your website. And that's going to be very important quick dashboard overview, you can get most of the information you need on uh, a dashboard overview with the exception of key phrases and page views. So that's something you can easily modify inside your da uh, dashboard by adding a widget. And you can say, what do you want to add? You want to add a pie chart, uh, a different metric. And um, that information is very simple to be able to add as well. Anyways, I hope this is helpful for you. Um, for many that are watching this video, this is too much information and, uh, and or just, just enough to be able to ask questions and get your uh, SEO agency to be able to uh, assist you in understanding what's working, what's not, and so forth. You really need to have a pretty significant amount of history. You know, everything in web is first off, uh, having the right technology, second off, having the right reporting tools, third, building a fan base, traffic, engagement, visibility, page rank, and so forth online. And then fourth and final is also going to be looking at conversions. So you've got to make sure that you start in that order. Um, everything is surrounding the building of content, posting of content, and continuing to use those sites. Uh, the last thing I'll just touch on real quick, for example, is a page rank report. I want to make sure everybody understands your page rank reports are not going to come from analytics or from Google Analytics, and that is your ability to choose a key phrase and uh, determine what page you're on for this. So this is one of our clients. These are this is last month, this is this month, and where their page rank uh, is for each each primary key phrase. So that's something that you guys will get, but it's not going to happen in an analytics environment. All right, with that, I hope that uh, this is helpful and um, you're gonna be moving on to the next training application. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to let us know. And as Google um, changes their um, systems and adds more uh, tools and so forth, we'll continue to keep you updated. Thanks again. You can check us out at ciwebgroup.com or 12steproadmap.com.